So of course I work for Northside Hospital and Atlanta Cancer Center. Um, I work at the Atlanta location. Um, we have a reference site agreement with Vision RT, so that's our only conflict of interest. Um, my presentation overview is, um, of course, I'm going to go over everything with um, the left-sided breast treatment for DIBH. Um, the goal of DIBH, CT SIM, dosimetry, importing um, the plan, defining region of interest, verification process, daily treatment, our weekly imaging. Um, I've got a case study to look at of a patient who, for some reason, could not um, reproduce her breath hold, um, challenges we encountered, and then our conclusion. So again, I work at Northside Hospital in Atlanta. In 2014, we commissioned our true beam with um, Align RT, and we started treating um, left breast using DIBH. We, um, our goal of starting this program was to protect the heart from damage using easy breathing techniques with a reproducible setup. So our process starts in CT SIM, and it is a, um, a very in-depth process in our CT simulator. We go ahead and start out with coaching and education. That education comes from the physician first. So the patients are aware that we're going to be asking them to hold their breath for the CT sum and that um, we're going to make sure that everything is correct before we move forward. Um, we start with our patient setup first. We make sure that they're positioned correctly. We use um, a wing board for our patients who are a chest wall or who have had um, a complete mastectomy. We use a breast board for patients who actually have an intact breast. We use the back lock with both arms up. They, they're holding the U-bar, and um, we use a knee cushion and with their toes tied as well. We obtain two scans. We do a free breathe and a breath hold scan, and we place um, marks on the patient in the free breathe position. We also use our RPM system to evaluate the patients for breath hold um, in the CT sim. So before um, we do our free breathe scan first, and then we sit the patient up, let them kind of relax a little bit. We explain the process to them. We put the box pretty high up on their chest, making sure that you know that we're getting a good read on it, and we can kept, pick up on their breathing. Then we ask them to breathe in and hold their breath. This is an ideal breath hold scan where they've got that nice line. You can see it's above the, um, their normal breathing range. And um, that's what our goal is to coach the patients to, to do every single day. So ideally, this is what it would look like. Occasionally we get patients that they take a breath in, they breathe it all out, and um, they hold their breath steady at their exhale position. So we, we found that just coaching them more often, making sure that they understand what we're looking for. And then we have patients that'll hold their breath and then breathe some and um, keep relaxing and um, breathing in, breathing out. So before we do our CT scan, we always want to make sure that we've um, gone through this process with them, that we know that they're holding their breath in a steady position, and then we also maintain that through CT. So when we actually do their breath hold scan, we're making sure that they're holding that breath solid all the way through, through the scan. Um, for patients, or for centers that don't have um, the RPM system, we also can align the lasers to the top of the patient's skin in the free breathe position ask them to take a breath in, then we can um, realign the lasers to the top of the patient's skin and see if they can reproduce that over several, um, several times, and then we want them to hold it steady for 10 to 15 seconds. So um, that's a good workaround if you don't have the RPM system, and you can see if they can reproduce that and just make sure that the lasers, every time they take a breath in and hold, that, that's, um, that the lasers are skimming the top of their skin. So um, I'm not a dosimetrist, so <laughs> this is all just from their information. We do import the free breathe scan and the breath hold scan. Um, with four machines, we only have one with a line RT right now, so we're trying to weed out the patients that, we, that really need the breath hold and that don't need the breath hold. So they import both um, the free breathe scan and the breath hold scan, and they um, contour and design a, a rough plan, which is that free breathe. And they, um, they're looking for a mean heart dose less than 350 with a V20 less than 5%. If breath hold is needed, they design a treatment plan. Um, we note it in all of our treatment prescriptions, so it's something that the therapist can check. 
They can see that breath hold is needed during the treatment planning, or during the treatment process. We um, copy the free breathe body into the breath hold scan so that we can import that structure as well. And then we send it to align our T. Um, our dosimetrist will um, bump up the dose rate to 600 on these patients so that we can treat them at a faster, in a faster time. And then it's also noted in all of the treatment fields. BH is noted before every, um, in every field so that the therapists see that too, so that they know that every patient is treated in breath hold. And then we include a free breathe SSD information into the treatment plan. And this is just another check for us to make sure that everything is setting up correctly. So we import the plan. Um, again, they import the breath hold body and then the free breathe scan. They define the region of interest. And we do all of this um, after our physics has checked everything. So we go pretty high up on the, on the breast and um, we make sure that we go pretty low on the sides laterally. We want as much stable surface as possible with this, only the breast tissue and then the lateral aspect of the breast tissue. We do not include the back lock, the arm, the chin, the contralateral breast, and we make sure that we always filter it too to make sure that it's, it's nice and stable. During the verification process, the patient is set up um, to those marks, and then we turn in a line RT um, to make sure that we are in the correct position. So we shift around to make sure everything's perfect. We try and get them as close to zero as possible. And we make sure that we were on coaching. So this is a patient who is on their free breathe DICOM and they're not in their correct position yet. Um, they push the monitoring button, they fine tune the patient's positioning, they get it as close to zero as possible, and then they pause it um, and they go ahead and move on to their free breathe breath hold. They're not gonna be in position, they should not be in position from their free breathe scan to their breath hold scan at that point yet. You're gonna to have to ask the patient to take a breath in in order to achieve that breath hold position. So we push the monitoring button and fine tune the patient's positioning. Sorry. So we ask the patient to take a breath in, and um, the therapist can minimally shift the lat and long if they need to to achieve that um, positioning. They never shift the, the vert. And so this patient had no problem breathing in and achieving that breath hold position. Um, with the process that we're going through, they should know what we expect from CT SIM. It's a nice, comfortable, deep breath hold in. It's not anything where they're, sh where they're breathing or arching their back. And because of our education, um, it's usually pretty achievable at the time of verification. So we begin by filming an ISO pair in the patient. Um, we make sure that the patient takes a nice, comfortable breath in, they hold their breath, we take a film, we let them breathe normally, then we rotate to the, the lateral, we take another film, make sure they held their breath all the way through. We retract all of our imaging arms, then we rotate the gantry back up to zero and um, we make sure everything looks good. We match the pair, we make sure that the shifts are correct, we have everybody look at the films, agree on them, and then um, what we do is we also ask the patient to take another breath in, hold their breath, we pause align our T, then we make the shifts, and then we capture a new reference image with the patient still in that breath hold position. And um, this is really important, I know it came up the other day about people saying, well what if they lost their position, what if they couldn't hold their breath. Um, we haven't run into that issue yet because it's such a fast process. I know it sounds like a lot of steps where you're pausing and then you're going back to it, but it's really not a lot of steps. It's really quick once you get it down. And in general, it takes us about five seconds to do when we ask them to hold their breath, pause it, and then reappear, reselect that new reference. The next thing that we do is we go ahead and ask the patient to breathe normally. Um, we give them about 30 seconds to um, catch, catch their breath, and then we capture a new free breathe image. So we pause that breath hold, we go back to our reference images and select the DICOM for the free breathe, and then select a new free breathe image too. The next thing that we do is we go ahead and start um, checking our SSDs. 
So um, sometimes we'll go ahead and check our SSDs at the free breathe just to get another check to make sure everything's still looking good. And then we'll go on and start filming our images too. So then we'll go to our port films, make sure that we take our tangents, our superclav if needed, a PAB if needed, and go through all of those and make sure everything looks really good. And so this is just another instance where we've asked the patient to breathe in, hold their breath in position, and then checked their SSD in the, in, the, um, in the treatment position to make sure that everything is correct. So this is our verification film process. This is a patient we probably did about three weeks ago. Um, she, was, she was a patient, she had been through CT SIM, she was educated on what we expected. Um, we took her reference images, we matched it up, we took her, we, we applied our shifts, we um, asked her to hold her breath through the whole process, and um, we used a line RT to begin with. And so our shifts were minimal when we actually took our first image. So our, this, is our, this is our verification image, first image, and our largest shift was 0.26. And um, I mean, that, that speaks volumes. If you go onto any of our other treatment machines, our shifts are, you know, half a CM to make sure everything's correct at least on, on all those other patients. Um, the filming time completely for this patient for her verification process was seven minutes and 31 seconds. So we were able to do all of her films, acquire all new reference images, make sure everything was perfect and in a minimal amount of time. So the daily treatment process is, I don't know why it's not popping up, it's popping up on this screen down here. Um, we select the patient's most recent free breathe image. We place the patient in the free breathe position using line RT. We pause the monitoring and then we select the, new, the newest reference image for breath hold. Um, we recapture our breath breath hold references every week when we do films. So we don't ever go back to those DICOM images unless we have an issue with a patient. So we just re we recapture every single time we do an image. Um, we ask a patient to take a deep breath in and hold it to achieve that deep inspiration breath hold position and then we leave the treatment room. We make sure that they can hold it for a steady amount of time, we let them breathe normally and then we start the treatment. So this is a patient who's in their correct position for breath hold, uh, excuse me, for free breathe for daily treatment. And then we position her in breath hold for daily treatment. She takes a break during treatment. This, was a, this field had a significant amount of monitor units. So she fell out of the treatment position. And of course, we have our beam hold on. Um, we're using an MMI interface. And so the beam was held during treatment. We let her breathe for a couple of moments, then she caught her breath, and then we resumed treatment. So our weekly imaging process is very similar to the verification process. The patient set up in their treatment position and shifted into their correct free breathe, and then we use a line RT to make sure that everything's correct. We pause that, we switch over to our breath hold um, reference image. We make sure that the patient can achieve that breath hold reference image. We leave the room, we take that ISO pair, we make sure that everything's good. Um, and then before um, applying those shifts, we again rotate the gantry back up to zero. We retract all imaging arms, we ask the patient to hold their breath. We apply our shifts, recapture a new free, excuse me, a new breath hold image, and then let the patient breathe normally, and then recapture another free breathe image too. Um, on our weekly imaging, if we do imaging, we never shift off of our ISO pair. The, the plans are so good, and we're not having issues with um, recreating our images that we don't need to, to shift off of those tangent port films that were taken. So this is a patient who was treated for 13 fractions using um, deep inspiration breath hold. She had 13 fractions and she had 28 total. And um, her films looked good. We, we weren't having any issues. And on her 13th day, she came in and she could no longer achieve her breath hold setup. We, were, um, we got her in our free breathe position and we would put her in the breath hold and she couldn't, she couldn't breathe, she couldn't make it. Um, so we went back to our DICOM images because that's our starting point. So at every point, the patient should always be able to recap, recreate that. And um, she, we took an image on her just, 
just to acquire an image and see what was going on. She could not achieve the DICOM either. And what we found was her expanders had shifted overnight. And so we had to re-simulate the patient to make sure that everything was correct with her treatment. And this was picked up using the line RT. We knew something was wrong. We knew that something had changed because for some reason this patient could not recreate their breath hold. I think if this would have happened in any other case, it would not have been picked up until um, film day. So we had some challenges when we started our Deep Inspiration Breath Hold program. The first was training and education. We have um, 10 therapists. We all had to rotate them through the one machine that we used to, um, to get everything, get them all up to date, get them trained, education. It, it was just a, a long process to make sure that 10 therapists were all trained in how to use the problems, uh, um, how to use the uh, program. Um, language barriers with patients, we have a lot of patients that, um, that need translation services. And we wanna make sure that in our CT sim, we're explaining to them the same process that we do for daily treatment. So we'll have to go through, make sure that the translator understands that exactly what we're saying. This is what we're gonna say every single day when we're talking to the patient. This is what they expect. So even saying, take a breath in, and then you can breathe normally. We wanna make sure that that's the same day to day with each patient. Um, learning the importance of coaching. I think it was um, when we first started the program, it was easy to say, oh, this patient just can't achieve the breath hold. But if you really work with the patients and teach them you know, what you expect from them, then you'll learn that you can coach them to achieve that position over and over again. Um, we've, we also had issues, issues with correct, capturing the reference image correctly. And that just came from that free breathe reference image, making sure that we gave the patient enough time to catch their breath before we captured that free breathe reference image. Some days we would come in and they would be so similar and you would go back to the DICOM and you would find that you know, they were, they, the free breathe wasn't captured correctly, that it was when the patient was still breathing from, from holding their breath. We also went through a process change. We originally started um, our process with, with just the breath hold. We were not using our free breathe um, reference image. Um, I will tell you that this was a big change for us and it really changed the way that we use the program. Um, we, we found that it's so much easier. It gave us a point to troubleshoot back from. So if we ever had an issue, we could always go back to that free breathe reference image. If um, the patient could achieve the breath hold for one field, we, and then they couldn't achieve it for another reason, we could always go back to that free breathe reference image and see if the patient had moved in between the treatments. And that was, that was a big help for us. So um, we found that we can produce um, reproducible setups and treatments to the left breast using SGRT. Um, we're, we're seeing real-time monitoring, so we know if the patient's moved during treatment. We can have minor changes in um, patient positioning. And then we've got sub-millimeter accuracy due to our true beam, too. That's, that's it.